Hello everyone, and as always, welcome to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we're finding, learning, and turning the great strategy games, and today we dive back into the Pacific, pun intended. We are over the Hawaiian Islands, and we will be resolving turn 15 today or december 22nd and moving to december 23rd now i said this uh the other day i think it was on the war in the pacific that i'm going to start uh turning two turns a week so we start moving along here and that kind of goes along with the new schedule i'm going to get on a consistent set schedule for the live streams so 2 p.m. Pacific Coast Time, Pacific Standard, PST, if you desire, uh, we will be live streaming War in the Pacific every day. And now that means we may do three turns a week. We may do a little more, a little less, depends on what's going on in the war. In this early part, we're kind of in that phase where, you know, there's not as much going on as maybe there was right at the start, or there will be a little bit later. And so maybe we'll move a little faster. And then at three o'clock each day, Pacific Coast time, I will, well, as of right now, I'm going to be doing the air war right after this in War in the East 2. And so I'm going to have that three o'clock zone kind of be a, a grab bag, if you will. You know, if we've got Battle Sef, Warhammer 40k Battle Sector, we may play it then. Uh, when Distant Worlds 2 comes out, we'll be playing that then. Um, right now, it's War in the East 2, the air war. And then at four o'clock uh, Pacific Standard Time, I will be playing War in the East 2, our actual Let's Play. And so I'm going to be doing that uh, consistently from now on. And so that can be your schedule. I will also put that up in the Discord. I'll put it on Twitch. I'll put it on YouTube. Wherever the heck they'll let me put it. I might write it on our home family calendar even. Um, those will be the times. All right, let's jump into the game. Enough of the administrative matters. Oh, by the way, if you're watching this and you have not subscribed yet, subscribe. We're at 2498. Be the 25th hundred. You will win my eternal gratitude. <laughs> That's all you win. I'm not giving away prizes yet. Uh, although I will be doing um, some strategy gaming dojo little hats uh, and shirts. If you're interested in that, uh, if you say, well, you know, I don't know, it's weird to send you a $2 PayPal or something. Uh, if you would rather, uh, I will be putting those up in the not too distant future with the little ninja. I think the ninja's cute. Uh, maybe you do too. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, I'll be sell <laughs> selling that stuff uh, in the near future. Anyway, let's get to 2,500. That's not bad. Uh, we're coming up on our five-month anniversary, which will be April 13th. That will be five months that the dojo has been around, and uh, it's gone very well, very well. Thank you guys very much. Okay, let's jump in here. Now, I had the question come up, and I can't remember if it was underneath a YouTube video or if it was in the Discord. What is your procedure every turn? All right, so what do you kind of go through? What are your mental checklists? Well, a, you know, uh, a psychologist may have a field day with that and probably charge me $1,000 an hour to answer those questions. But here is my self-reflective understanding of what I do when I start a turn. And that is, I always go to the intelligence report. I look over the intelligence report. I look at all of the items over here. I kind of try to make a little mental list of what uh, units may be arriving soon, especially if it's something like the Yorktown. We've pointed that out many times. The Yorktown's going to be coming into San Diego. I'm obviously very excited about it. Uh, but I'll just kind of make mental notes of that. So if we get destroyers before that, I send them up to LA or San Diego because I know that's coming in, right? Um, same kind of deal with the ground and with the uh, planes. I'll get an idea. We've been talking about those banshees that will be coming into Brisbane, for instance, just something like that. You know, I, I'll, I'll make a mental note of it. I don't write it down necessarily. Now, I do know that some people play this game with a notebook and think, hey, you know, next turn I need to do X, Y, Z. Nothing wrong with that. I, I just don't play that way. I've played enough now that I, I feel like I sort of know what's going to happen and, and what do I, I need to do each turn. So I come and look at the intelligence report. Then I come up and look at the operations report. And I'll just read down here <clears throat> many, many times, obviously. It's going to tell you 
things that you already know. Uh, but you'll see just kind of interesting things sometimes where Japanese, you know, recon sighted over Bataan. Well, I, I mean, we know that, right? They're going to run recon. They're about to come down that way on the island of Luzon. That's no surprise, but you may get some information out of here, but you can quickly scan it. And once you're used to reading it, I read over that. Um, <clears throat> sometimes the signal intelligence can be helpful. Uh, it can tell you where, for instance, the main Japanese task force might be. It may give you, you know, heavy volume of radio transmissions. Something like that could tell you where they're about to attack next, where they're about to land their troops. Um, you know, so I would always go look at this. I look at it very, you know, there's not a whole lot of information, right, that you have to take in here. Uh, and some of it's like 56 construction company is located at Apari. All right. I mean, that's great, you know, but it just doesn't take you long to get through. So I go and look at those three. Then generally I go list all task forces. I take that off. I go to sub ops and I turn. Now I've already done that because it's just how, you know, this, the databases stay the way you had them. Uh, I've got what the ammo situation is. And I look through all of my submarines to make sure they have torpedoes. If they don't, or if they're low, now we've got one here that's, I guess, 24%. That's probably only four torpedoes. I could go look at the loadout. I'm not going to. Uh, if it really mattered, I would. But then I would go to this sub patrol and I'd say, who is this? You know, uh, what's going on with the SS SEAL? It's low on uh, torpedoes now. And I may send that home a little early to go get some more torpedoes. In this case, it is loca or its home port is Surubaya. All right. So I go and look through all of those. Um, I may also go back and look at damage ships. So I would you know, get off of sub ops, I'd go to all task forces. Oh, not all task forces, I'm sorry. I would go up to my ship list, there we go, and I would sort by damage and just see, you know, what's damaged out here? What do we need to deal with? For instance, the Barker, what's the Barker doing? Well, I don't know. Let's go find it. Let's go figure out what's happening with the Barker. Let's go back. All right, where's it located? And here we go. Barker is sitting at Jalo. Now, we've, it looks like we've already given it an order to get out of here. Um, actually, we haven't. These units, yep, we got a ship in port. That is the Barker. Then you've got to determine, hey, can this thing get out of here? Does it have too much damage to get out of here? It's still got a speed of 21. So we're going to form a new task force. Um... We're going to put it on, it's still got a speed, so I'm going to put it on surface combat. Um, I should probably maybe change that, but we're not going to. Okay, we're going to do the Barker here, done, and we'll put, uh, you know, Repair Surubaya, and we're going to send it. Close enough. Uh, we're going to send it down there to that port. Uh, I guess I left the A. I, I made that as an O. It's an A. Maybe that's why I mispronounce it, Stanley. Um, and we're going to set it to head down here as fast as it can. Now, it doesn't have much endurance left, so uh, we're, I don't think we can do it at full speed. Ah, we can. Okay, so we're going to take it out of there at full speed and get it down here to get it repaired in a decent size port. I do believe Surubaya does have repair. Oh, shoot. You guys can't see the production. Okay. Well, anyway, we're sending it down there. So I would go through my ships here. I would look, you know, who's got damage? Where are they? What's the situation? What's the story here? We've got this sub. Why don't we go look at the sub? And we'll see where it is. Okay, it's coming into port here. It's, you know, kind of coming in with this stuff. And then once it gets into port, we'll stick it in the repair yard if we can, or if even better, if we can do it at the pier, we'll do it there. And uh, then, you know, get to working and repairing 
on these things. So I go through all of that and then usually just it's how I do it. I mean, I'm not saying it's the right way to do it. I go to all my off map bases and get them taken care of. Then I don't have to think and worry about the off map bases. I can get down on the map and figure out what's going on. Okay, so I do the off map bases. We've already done that for this turn. Then I go to what I call my hot spots. I go to Karachi. What is happening in Karachi? Well, we've got a bunch of unloading on going on here at Karachi. We also have the Domer here, uh, just a transport ship. I don't think we have anything that's supposed to go anywhere. We've got these British troops here, but we'll probably just leave them here. We already took the Aussies out. They were the ones we really wanted to go out. So I would just, you know, go through the plane counters, I go through the task force counters, and I make sure there's nothing left in port that I don't actually want to be left in port, okay? So I usually go something like Karachi. I may take a peek at Bombay, just see what's going on there. Then I go down to Colombo, and if I see any of these task forces that catch my eye, maybe I'll go look at them. So I would then go to Colombo. I would say, okay, what's happening at Colombo? We've got four ships in port. Why is that? Uh, we've got a submarine tender. We've got two transports, and we've got an armed merchant cruiser. Okay, those are the kind of things you oftentimes just see sitting in port because you're waiting for them to do something else. So then I, you know, go next to where do I usually go? Actually, probably if I'm being honest, I would go over to Calcutta, Chittagong, Rangoon. Uh, after that, and I would just see what's happening there. Is there any more that we can get into Rangoon? Why are there eight ships in port? Why are all these AKs in port at Calcutta? We should probably do something about that. What's wrong, man? What's wrong with you? Uh, let's get these out, get them moving, get them moving our different freight, whatever that freight may be. Um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, this is... Uh, you know, kind of my process this is I just go around the map to my hotspots and make sure I quote unquote touch them each time and make sure that I've got everything the way I want it to be in the really important places. All right. And so I jump down here to Singapore. We actually maybe want to look at Singapore here because we've got uh, the Japanese are on the way. They're starting to move south now. You know, originally they landed here at Kota Baru. They had to mess around here with Alor Star, with Georgetown. They've now done that. They've taken those bases, and now they're heading straight for Singapore. So let's go look at Singapore and see what we have going on there. Uh, we've got a cap level of 50 with uh, what was six buffaloes we're down to three that are actually active now now this is part of 224 group raf we had to make that tough decision was it 224 group or 223 group that got off of the malayan peninsula i do believe we picked one or the other although i see them both still here uh 223, I think, is the one that we picked. Yeah, and we've got it in strategic move. Now, that is why we were sending transports up here. Uh, two of those transports got destroyed, though. And so now it's got me thinking, well, is this really the way we want to go? Uh, but we are going to try to get them out. We've got some buffaloes here, also running 50 cap. Uh, that looks good. More buffaloes, even. Wow, a lot of buffalo ones down here. Again, this is 223 group, another 224 group, a 224 group. Uh, so this is 223. It's the bigger squadron of the three. It's running cap. We may get it out when we get the 223 out, assuming we can. Uh, we've got these Vildebeest uh, running torpedo missions, and they're actually even using torpedoes. Uh, that's exciting. And... We've just got them doing a little naval search here off of Singapore, just in case the Japanese get any idea of landing at Mersing. Oftentimes, good Japanese players will land at Kotoburu and Mersing, and then they're just right on top of you. They'll try to then block off any of these British troops trying to fall back to Singapore. It's probably actually the better move to make as a Japanese player. Um... Stanley, good evening. Champions League to this. Does it get any better than that, Stanley? Uh, I didn't watch Champions League today. I was actually watching my Chicago Cubs play some American baseball. 
the game wasn't quite over when I started this, so the wife is supposed to tell me if anybody scores. But I, she doesn't know much about sports, so she's kind of like, I, you know, I don't know. She says it's one to one still. Okay, we're we're good. Bottom of the ninth inning. Uh, crying Mimi, hello, how are you, Kalo? What's going on, Kalo? I'm glad you made it. I know uh, certain times you said, oh, I just missed it or whatever, uh, but glad you're here now. Uh, okay, what's the next thing we got? More Vildebeests, and these are members of 223 Group RAF, which seems to have these torpedo bombers in it. Uh, we will probably be getting them out of here before long. We've got them on general naval attack. So anything in this you know, little area here, if they spot it, it's commander discretion. Then we've got some... Aussie torpedo bombers. It's again, it's the Vildebeest. It's the same make a plane. They maybe get mixed up with the Brits, and the Brits are like, You are in our Vildebeest, and the Aussies are like, No, mate, I'm not in your Vildebeest. It's all Vildebeest. That's a terrible Australian accent. Um, yes, uh, we've got them here. They're also looking on, well, they're actually doing naval attack. So that's uh, more, you know, we're looking. They're going to sit here. We've given them a secondary to rest, and they have zero fatigue. So obviously, they haven't been going out and doing much. Uh, they're in 224 groups, so we've got a lot of mixture here, right? Uh, we've got more buffaloes, 12 more of them that are ready. One that's not running 50 cap. That's a 224 group. Uh, here's some Kiwis, a 224 group of them running 50 cap. Again, it's Buffalo. we got a lot of Buffaloes up in the air. And I'm not talking about the ones that roam the plains, my friend. Uh, these are fighters. Uh, Weirways, okay, ASW. Wow, we're running ASW patrol here. Is that really needed at this point? Probably not. Um you know, we're running it right here, this ASW. Eh, we may want to rethink that at some point. Uh, we've got Swordfish. we got some Swordfish in here out of the 224 group at RAF. They are doing naval attack as well. So they're just kind of sitting around until the commander says, go, go, go. All right. Uh, let's try to get 223 Group RAF out of here. So this is the Dutch task force that just got chewed up last time. Um, and we're going to say... RAF EVAC. That's what I'm going to call this. RAF EVAC. Um, right. We're going to dock them. We're going to load. Now, this is dangerous. Don't try this at home, kids. Load troops. And. Nope. I was wrong. We picked the 224. Interesting. Well, we're going to then change all of those air units to the 223. Um, wow, I really had those mixed up in my head. Okay, uh, now is the 224, well, it must be ready. Oh, we don't have enough. Oh my gosh, can you believe I sent this up here? You know why it was, is because those two transports got smoked. Uh, but we do have another transport here. It is the Clanton, and we are going to go grab it. Excellent. Okay, well, thank goodness we've got another transport here. It's a British transport. It's also, we've got a little cargo here with the allout. And you, you, as you can see, we're already loading the 224 on. Wow, okay, uh, my bad, my bad. I just didn't realize we'd already done that. Now, where are we going to take them? That's a great question. I think next we're going to take them to to Jillajap. Now, I thought about taking them to Darwin, and I think I've already set them on Darwin. Uh, and you can see here, it just gets there. 25-25 on the one-way trip at full speed. And I think we'll just leave these transports there, at least for the time being. Uh, so 224 is getting out. Man, they lost the coin toss to the 223. And that's got to be painful for the friends and family of the 223 Group RAF because they will eventually uh, meet the Japanese and not on their terms. Uh, <laughs> that sounded like a documentary. Um, right, so let's flip all of these over to being commanded by the 223. 223, okay, that'll give them... A few bonuses, but more fighters get in the air and whatnot. 
So we're going to flip them all over. 223, 223. There's a 224. Now, if they do make their way down to Java, as they will eventually, um, we will switch them back to the 224, obviously. Now, this is costing us points. So don't think that it's not. They charge you for this. Um, wow, I've got three more. This is going to cost like 32 more points. Is it worth it? Well, I think it is for the fighters. Uh, I may leave the torpedo bombers alone, though, because this is costing a little bit more than I wanted it to. These level bombers, the weirways, we're going to get them out of here. There's no reason that they're here, and we'll actually take them. Let's see who's got the most support. Uh, Batavia obviously does, and we're going to take them to Batavia then, and we'll get them out of here. The torpedo bombers, we really could get out of here. I, I don't know how much good they're going to do. Again, I like to keep them here for a little bit in case the Japanese come to Mersing. But that threat maybe still exists. They may still come to Mersing, uh, but it doesn't really matter now. I mean, you know, ultimately by the time they got there and got an invasion going on, we're, we could get everything out of Kuala Lumpur and get it down the peninsula. So, Kalo asks, Are you going to be doing War in the East 2 later today, too? Uh, yes, I am. And so that's going to be the schedule from now on. Uh, 2 o'clock, my time, Pacific time, War in the Pacific. 3 o'clock, I'm going to call the grab bag, uh, the potpourri, the, uh, you know, it could be anything, the, <laughs> the jack in the box. Um, that will be today, War in the East 2, the Air War. We're going to go back and do that. But at 3 o'clock, depending on what game is going on, you know, or is the new game or whatnot, I will be doing that at 3 o'clock, uh, my time every day. Uh, so we're going to do the Air War. When that's over, we may start a campaign with War in the West. Although, gosh, you know, three Grigsby games going on at once. I, I don't know if my mind can handle that. And then 4 o'clock, we'll do War in the East 2, Let's Play. All right, and we'll do that at 4 o'clock my time every day uh, until I'm in Aruba. And <laughs> when I'm in Aruba, I, I make no such promises. Uh, I'll have an updated schedule uh, when I'm down at that Dutch protectorate. Um, okay, we've shifted these over. We've spent a lot. Uh, you know, I wonder how much of the 224 we lost. Did any of that go down with the transports? Yeah, well, we've got 15 of it that's damaged. We need to get the heck out of there. Right? We need to change them to get ready for Tajilajap. Now, we may put them in Batavia. We may put them in Surubaya. I'm just not sure yet. I actually maybe will even up the cap until they get out of here. So let's go up to 60 on the cap with all of our fighters. Uh, we're doing okay on fatigue here. Not great. I wouldn't say, oh, wow. I mean, this is only a nine, right? We can run 60 for a turn or two until we get them off of Singapore. Okay, uh, so that's that. Now, what else do we have here? Uh, you know, I'm going to start hitting this flag, and we can see the units very quickly this way. And here you can see we've got them all on, not all of them. These base forces want to get out. We've got them on strat move. We really should probably, and we've got both of the RAFs on strat. We're going to take that off, and we're going to put them on combat. We're going to put these base forces on combat, at least for now. Uh, we may change that. We may send something back up there to try to uh, get something else out. We may send more transports, but as of right now, no. Um, rest. Combat. There we go. Combat. This Now, this screen I haven't been using a whole lot. I generally do when I play. This is your unit screen, the flag over here. You click on that, and you can see everything about them, right? You know, is... Uh, whether they're on reinforcement, their op mode. Uh, and so really I should do this. It's a lot faster. Uh, usually I click through them all just because early on and in the tutorial and early on in this Let's Play, I just wanted you to be able to see everything. Uh, but now I think it makes a lot of sense. Oh, we've still got that Australian Brigade here, Stanley. They were really who we were supposed to get out. Can they get on this transport are we even going to try it um k 
Okay. Um, do, 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 do. We've got four transports available, three of which are loading. Let's reallocate if we can. No. Yeah, so that just... Let's go back. We got them spread across all four ships. Now we could reallocate that. Let's adjust the load troops. No, we can't do it that way. I'm trying to think exactly how to do this. Uh, load troops only. Do, 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 do. Hmm. Let's try use minimum ships. Uh, that gets us to three. That doesn't really do us a whole lot of good. Um, I did want to get these Australians out. I'm just, I don't, we, I kind of wanted to do it here, but I don't even know that this has got enough. It doesn't have a lot of capacity. Uh, these guys take a lot of troop load. I, I think they're stuck here for now, Stanley. And I, I know you don't want to hear that. Um, all right, we're going to send them back to Singapore as their objective for now. Now, we had given them the orders to move out, and I feel bad about it. <clears throat> but I'm not sure we have a choice. We've still got the two Australian brigades sitting here. Okay, well that's Singapore. I'm going to move on uh, because I don't like. I don't even like to think about that, Stanley. Let's go to our troop loadout at Ku uh, Kuala Lumpur. Um, combat, defend, and you're all at your target except for this one. This needs a Kuala Lumpur. Objective, and now I think we've got them all the way we want them. Combat, yes. Defend, yes. Okay, that all looks good. Could I? I could do um, replacements on for all of these. Sure, why not? There we go. We'll just click those on really fast, and they will be getting replacements. Now I have allowed the stockpile to be opened. And so they will all be getting replacements. All right, so we did Singapore. I think maybe we come over here and look at the Philippines very quickly, make sure that we don't have some kind of wild situation uh, in the Philippines. Thank you for following Brody21. I do appreciate it, my friend. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Stanley, that's right. They can have another drink at Raffles. All right. <laughs> I didn't know you knew the bar situation in Singapore, Stanley, but I'm glad that you do. Uh, that's funny. Okay, let's look at the island of Luzon and figure out what in the world are we going to do here. Well, there's not a whole lot we can do, unfortunately, my friends. Uh, really, these troops are doomed for the most part. Uh, there's no way we can get them off the island. There's no place to take them. There's nothing to take them if we could. Uh, and so really, you know, we're at the mercy here of the Japanese. I hate to say that, but it's true. There's just nothing to be done for a lot of these troops. I say a lot of them, all of them. Uh, Stanley, you got married there. What? Was this some wild Singapore night and you got married at Raffles? In... No, I want it to be a true love story, you know. You saw each other and you threw a penny in the wishing fountain and who knows what happened out in Singapore. You know, Singapore doesn't talk. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, Kalo, I hope you come back. All right, Stanley. Yep. Okay. You can tell me one day. I I don't want you to have to share it with the world. Uh, one of these days we will meet and I'm going to buy you a beer and you can tell me this, uh, this love story. Um, okay. Up here in Luzon, we've got Eba. You know, that it's just a base force at Eba. We've got Lingayan. Let's pull up the units at Lingayan. They're on combat, defend. Now, they're all scheduled to fall back to Clark Field except for this one, uh, but it will eventually, too. They'll all get uh, pushed back there. Um, so not a whole lot to think about there. Then we go to, what is this? Kabanatuan. Easy for me to say. Defend at target. That's what you want to see. Okay. And, I, oh, I also want to make sure I've got replacements on for all of these. 
and I do. Okay, so replacements on. Uh, you know, to the extent we can get some kind of reinforcement or help here to slow the Japanese juggernaut down, that's great. I'm going to turn this on for the U.S. units as well. I think I had those off just for two of them. For replacements, I mean, combat, defend, at target. You know, and this is how you can quickly move around the map uh, when it comes to your ground forces and just make sure you have everything. Now, we've got a lot of stuff at Clark Field. We've taken all of the aircraft out of Clark Field uh, because, you know, the Japanese are here. And so um, we're going to turn all replacements on. There we go. Just the opposite. There, turn them off. No, I want them on. Turn them all on. Replacements on. There we go. Um, we've got them all at combat. We've got them all to set to defend. Now they're almost all at the target, meaning uh, at Clark Field. This one is set for Bata Batan or Baton. I don't know. There's one that's called Baton, Baton Death March, right? Then there's Batan. I think this one's Batan, but you can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, let's go ahead and set them for Clark Field 2. I don't see any reason why not. They're going to be here. Now, they may get driven back, uh, but at that point, you know, who cares what their objective is, really? Uh, they're not going to meet their objective, which is to hold Clark Field. Uh, we will also toggle replacements on here. There we go. And we're going to defend, and they're all at the target. Okay, so this all looks good. We've got everything set. I say it looks good. We're in a really bad situation as the Japanese come here southwest on the island. But um, we've got everything set the way we want to. Uh, let's check out these two units. Let's turn their replacements on. I guess we can just easier do it here. So to the extent they can get anything. And we've got them set for Batangis, which is here. Okay. Oh, we've still got these, uh, you, these, we got one fighter at Batangis. We've got two fighters at Batangis. Let's try to get these out of here. Oh, this is the one that I brought down here. Okay, this one is not. We'll try to take this down to Cebu if we can. I think that's where I'm launching or uh, staging for them to all to get out is Cebu. I know I just saw it. There it is. There it is. We're a little oversubscribed there right now. Where else could they go? Ilio. That looks pretty good. Look at that. Clark Field. 200 support sitting at Clark Field with nothing to do. We'll go to Ilio actually with them. All right. And then let's see the float plane. Eh, we'll let him keep going. If we lose one float plane, I mean, I'm sure those pilots aren't happy to hear that. But if we lose one float plane, eh, it's not the end of the world. Uh, Cebu. Okay, this should all be set up already. We really don't have much here, right? Uh, combat, defense, Cebu, sure. Uh, so that is really what's going on in the Philippines. So we've looked at Malaya. We've looked at the Philippines. I expect the Japanese to land here on the northern part of Greater Borneo. Um, this Maybe this turn, maybe next turn, but they're they're here. They're here. There's nothing to worry about there they have already uh set sail for this invasion i don't think there's a whole lot we can do about it suru ba ya uh okay what do, what do we have going on here well let's look at our air forces we've got a lot of these nil you know i i'm not going to go into what the uh abbreviation is it's something the royal no it's the kingdom of netherlands something or nothing uh something or nothing uh, right. And then we've got one 224 group at RAF here. We've got ASW going on, training. We've got some cap up, training. Okay. Um, well, we're going to wait, but eventually, obviously, we're going to get those out of training. We've got a troop transport here where we were going across and picking up some things. Are we still doing that? This is the one that I went back and forth. I'm like, what are these? Yeah, we are. It's the Barisian uh, Nil Regiment, and that's what they're picking up from Pomacazin. Okay. Uh, I believe this is Pomacazin, right? 
Yeah, it is. So it's on this little island just to the southeast. Uh, there's no land bridge to get across to Surubaya. And so we are just picking them up and giving them a ride home. The Blenheims are running naval search. Okay, uh, sounds good to me. Hold on, we've got a patrol level of zero, though. Oh, they're on naval attack, my bad. Okay, so if they see anything out here, they uh, could get orders to attack it. Uh, we've got a bunch of task forces here, of course. Now then, um, it's a matter of what we want to do here. We've got 35,000 fuel, and we've got 20,000 supply sitting here. If we were in a little more desperate situation, Java was about to come under attack, we would try to get some of that out. That doesn't really make a lot of sense where we're sitting right now. I mean, we need the fuel, we need the supply, especially if the Japanese come and take a big part of Java before they get here. We're going to want that. You know, to I don't want to call it a siege. It's a little different than a siege, but a lot of that stuff will cut off once you know the rail lines are cut and whatnot. Still drinking coffee. That's what kind of day it's been. Um, so we're gonna let that cargo sit here. Now we've got it that we called it cargo Dobby. Uh, but we're not going to go down to Dobby with it yet. Uh, cargo Broom, so these are both northern Australia is where they would be headed. Uh, we've got Fuel Darwin that's just sitting here. Uh, we do have the light cruiser, the Tromp, that is here. Uh, supposed to be providing a little AA. It's got 100. I mean, it's not nothing. How about that? Um, we've got Mine Layer out to Bali Papa now. Okay, he's all filled up with mines this time. I think we talked about this last time. Uh, and let's click him over to Lay Mines, and let's get him over to Bali Poppin. Laying mines in good old Bali Poppin. Uh, oh, the pickerel is in here, and the pickerel is damaged. All right, uh, let's look at the port. How much... Where do I, I, I'm so used to doing, the, oh, the repair shipyard, there it is, 8,000 tons, all right, I don't think a sub is 8,000 tons, uh, let's see, the pickerel is, the tonnage is only 1,355, um, can I not repair that here, though? Let's disband the task force, okay. Let's put you in port. Yeah, we've got a lot of things in port here, but most of them are Dutch transports, and we just don't have a whole lot to do with them. Okay, here we go. Uh, we could get him up to ready status in five days. I think we've got enough time to put him in the, the shipyard. Yeah, 11 days, and that will bring the pickerel back to health, full health, because we've got 29 major flood damage. And so with major damage... Uh, you pretty much got to put them in the ship. Well, I say you pretty much, you do have to put them in the shipyard. Uh, we got to remember the pickerel is down here in the shipyard at Surubaya. Um, fuel dar. Okay, we already looked at that. The Tromp, the mine layer, we got that on its way. And then we have the AG Gemma. Now, this is a Dutch ship that's a support ship. You don't have too many of those, let me tell you. Uh, I'm not really sure what to do with it. I kind of want to send it to Darwin. I mean, it's not needed out here. Uh, yes, Kalo, thank you. 2.5, we made it. Somebody was the 25th hundred sub and, you know, won a prize, which was my eternal gratitude. Uh, that was the prizes, the level of prizes we give around here at this point. At this point, it will improve. Uh, but... Thank you all very much. Uh, not bad. Five months. I would have never guessed. I thought I figured I'd have two people watching uh, total. Uh, anyway, okay, back to the Gemma. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I kind of want to send it to Surubaya, or to, uh, I'm sorry, to Darwin, because that's eventually where it's going to be used. Uh, it has no practical use up here. So, you know what? Rather than forget about it or to say, gosh, I should have gotten the Gemma out. What's wrong with me? Let's send it down here to Darwin. And we'll just home base it there. And when we start back on the offensive, oh, he needs some fuel. Hello. Let's replenish from, the, there we go. 
Now we've replenished from the port. All right. Uh, now they got a little more fuel. Got enough, certainly, to get down to Darwin. And uh, we'll just pull in there, and we'll wait until we go on the offensive. Uh, let's look at the troops at Surubaya. Uh, we've got one that's supposed to go out to Lemonjang. We haven't done that yet. There was some confusion and uh, at high command about how to get them down there. Uh, so we're just going to leave it there for now. Let's get these guys not on reserve. Let's get them on combat. Okay. Uh, then we've got one here on... Oh, well, we want that one. Uh, let's just go look. So it's set to march to Lamaging. Okay, okay. That's how we're going to get it out there. That looks perfect. Uh, let's jump up to Batavia very quickly and see what in the world is going on in Batavia. We do have six ships in port. We've got a submarine tender. We've got a small cargo ship. We've got an auxiliary gunboat patrol tender. All right, so that's getting really specific. We've got an armed mer merchant cruiser that does have a decent capacity. Uh, now, here at Batavia, we've got 47,000 supply, 28,000 fuel. Again, I'm not going to move them, really, or move that stuff until the Japanese really threaten here, and then we'll take all these little cargo ships, our merchant cruisers, whatever, and get them the hell out of here with as much as they can carry, but we're not going to do that right now. Now, we also have the Electra and the Express. These are two very, very good uh, destroyers for ASW work. Not sure why they're not in an ASW. I think these are the ones we had over at the Cocos, and I was like, what in the world are these doing at the Cocos? And uh, they have now come in and disbanded. So we're going to put them at ASW Combat. We'll put them in their own little task force here. All right, perfect. We're going to replenish them from the port. Oh, they already replenished when we put them in the task force. Very nice. ASW Java. And what I'm going to do with them is I'm going to give them a max react of three so that they'll operate all in this zone. And we're going to give them a patrol zone that goes all the way down here to Suru Ba Ya. And then uh, maybe up through the Java Sea. Do I dare? Yeah, let's do. It. Let's go here. So we're just going to do a triangle from Batavia to Surubaya to, uh, you know, kind of here off the tip of Borneo and then back to Batavia or close to it. Uh, how many revolutions can they make with that? Looks like they can do about five uh, times around before they need more fuel. So that looks uh, good to me. Uh, we will do that. I like that. Uh, we also have the stronghold in here that is now just sitting. Uh, we said ASWDEI. I'm going to assume that I meant Dutch East Indies there. Uh, okay, I don't really... Uh, let's go back. Let's see. The stronghold is running a 2. Well, that's not too good. It's only a 5-point ship. So what we're going to do with this patrol zone is we're going to have this go kind of up and around this island here uh, that has billeting on it. So we'll have it do one, and then we'll have it come to this tip where the other destroyers are going on their triangle, and then we'll have this come right back down by Batavia doing ASW work. Perfect. Okay, and let's give that a max react of two. There was no science to that. I just said, ah, how about two? Uh, okay. We've got local mine sweepers. We've got mine layers. The Regal uh, does not have any mines on yet. I actually may have to send that down to Surubaya to get some mines. We've got the De Klerk here. Inter interesting. Okay, the Sibaret is here as well. These are all those little cargo ships that ultimately we're going to get out of here at some point. We've got two light cruisers, the Java, which has 100 AA on it, and the Deroiter, which has 140, okay? And they're just providing AA. That's why they're sitting here uh, for no other reason. We've got PT boats, a lot of them. Uh, we've got a mine layer Palembang. This actually has mines. 
hey, excellent. So this one loaded up. That's probably why the other one didn't low up, load up. We're going to try to get down here and put more mines at Palombay. So we're going to tell it to lay mines. Excellent. We then have another mine layer that's supposed to go out to Miri. This does have mines on it, actually quite a few, 113 of the Vike 2. Uh, we're going to we're going to send that to Palombang as well. We're going to make it really costly if the Japanese just float down here on a joy ride uh, to Palombang. Now then, we've got a huge task force here that we have now dropped off. It was all of these British uh, troops here. We brought them over. We were going to go to Kaching with them. We decided not to. Uh, we decided instead to come here to Batavia. Uh, these are British, I believe. Yes, they are. And what do we want to do with all of these British transports? Well, they don't have a huge endurance. Uh, we can replenish them to see if they get any more. Nope, nothing more. So what we're going to do, I think, with them is send them back to Colombo. And if we've got to do something, you know, move some British troops around, we will do it, you know, down to Colombo and then out of Colombo. So these guys were running at full speed. We're going to put them back at mission speed. Now, Stanley may be asking, why don't we send them up to get the Aussies? Uh, I just lost two transports, though, Stanley trying to get into Singapore last time. But let's look here. Now that Aussie unit has like 2250 load on the troops. This has only got 350. Now these are the, the worst of the of the batch here. What's the Hong Kong have? I, I don't think this whole task force gets the Aussies out. Uh, and so now I do not like that routing. We've always got to go out and around the Cocos uh, so we're going to go out this way and then up to Colombo instead of going right around the back here. There's too much Japanese bombing about for that to work. Um, another little small AKL. I could combine these, really. I don't know why I got them sitting in different. Let's just disband that. Um, these are the mines. Let's go back to this one, the Sibaret. The De Klerk. I could disband all of these and put them all in one task force, I think, and get them ready to go because they are eventually going to have to make a run for it. And are they all kind of the same? Yeah, they're all close enough, I guess. Let's do a cargo. Um, I should just name it Cargo Run because they're going to have to get the heck out of here. Declerc, Sibaret, uh, Shanai, that's fine. These three, they've all got the same 10 speed, which is not not breaking world records out there, boys. Uh, done. And we'll just let it sit there. Um, yeah, I did, Stanley. I sure did get them out. Uh, that, let's see. Hey, Jim Singer, what's going on? Hi, Dojo. I followed you over from War in the East 2. Let's play cool to see what is going on in the Pacific. You get around. I do. I go all around the globe, don't I? And I put up a video today for War in the West, so I'm leaving no stone unturned for World War... If you're a World War II fan, uh, I've got you covered. Uh, yeah, I've got you covered. Uh, <laughs> Galau. I, why do I always struggle saying that? gal o -poli. Right? Gallopoli. Close enough, Stanley. That's what we're going to do. Uh, but yeah, Jim, I, I I love the War in the East. This is my favorite game. Now, don't tell the War in the East 2 fans that. Uh, that's quickly gaining, but this may always be my favorite game. But now I'm doing War in the West, too. I love that game. Very underrated since War in the East and War in the Pacific are so iconic, I guess, in some ways. Um, what else do we have here in Port Stanley? All right, I think that's fine. Uh, let's go back down to Surubaya and see what else we have in port there, just to make sure. Uh, a lot of tenders, all of these are tenders. Uh, then transport, all transports are tenders. Okay, looks good to me. Now, where are we in the episode? I feel like 10 minutes has gone by. I'm seeing 50 minutes. Wow, okay. Uh, we're going to save our turn, and we're going to resolve it. And we're going to move on to December 23rd. What do you think about that? Moving at lightning pace out here for this game. 
day by day through the Pacific War. Pretty amazing. Okay, so we've saved it. I think everything's ready to go. I did go in, around and look at other things that we haven't covered here. That brings up a question that you had, Stanley. There was some transport that was supposed to go to Cold Bay. Uh, it's very possible at some point I deviated from the spreadsheet. Not at first. I did the, ex the, the initial setup exactly like the coal spreadsheet. Uh, but after that, if they got to a location and I needed them for something, I kind of started freelancing a bit. And I'm sorry, if, if that wasn't in a video and it kind of got you confused about where it went or whatnot, I apologize. If you put it on Discord, I'll, we'll go find it. We'll find it together at the start of next episode. And I'll figure out, uh, I do need to get that stuff up to Cold Bay. So you do bring up a good point, which is they're running way behind because I use that transport for something else. And so the unit, the units, I think there are multiple units, are not in Cold Bay yet. Uh, and they need to be. We need to get them up there. Uh, also, if I have a cliffhanger at the end of an episode, I will remember to update you on that the next time. There's nothing more frustrating, I would imagine, watching the playlist and you're like, oh gosh, what happened to that unit? And the next episode, I'm up in China. Uh, so I'll, I'll, keep, I'll keep that in mind from now on. Uh, that's a fair point. That's a fair point, my friend. Um, okay, let's execute or in the orders phase execute and let's see what happens i think i got my message level you know kind of toned down a little bit last time it was going by so fast i feel like we missed a couple of things um i i like to watch this play out i love how this game like resolves a turn and we we go the u.s grant ship okay okay uh, yeah, I knew I got Gallopoli. Closer. Shouldn't have Churchill been blamed for Gallopoli? Is it, it wasn't Churchill somewhere, or or do I have that backwards that Churchill made his name because of Gallopoli? I got that so wrong. Which I should know it. It's not like I I I think I've even played the battle a few times on various games. Uh, so that's, that's, that's embarrassing. Hide my head in shame. Gallopoli. I'm going to get it right. I'm going to go listen to it on Wikipedia. Every, every student of war should know how to pronounce that, right? Wasn't that in 1915, Stanley? I know it's when they tried to surprise the Turks there in World War One, and then... It turned into a disaster. Assigning bombers to transport duty as it moves through every single thing. I love how it tells you everything it's doing. Blinking duck says ga lip o li. Ga lip o li. See, that's how you have to do it for me in the comments, guys. That was perfect, Blinking Duck. Thank you, my friend. And it nearly destroyed Churchill. I knew that there was like a scandal around it. You know, it was very ill-advised, like an amphibious landing before those were even things. Um, let's see what happens this time. We, we have started to get into their shipping a little bit. It seems like every turn we're, you know, getting torpedoes off at five or six and amazingly hitting two or three about every turn. I'm also curious to see if we see them in and around Rabul this time. Um, the invasion at Rabul is coming. Uh, there's absolutely no reason for them to bomb Rabul unless they're coming there. And so that will be coming. Uh, more action in Malaysia, more action in the Philippines. We'll see what happens in China. It looks like we've got all of our troops, or most all of our troops, off at Rangoon. We're getting troops off at Port Moresby, which is good if the Japanese are headed right there at Rabul. Uh, we're dropping some things off at Nomaya. Babel Dawab, this is the Japanese base we've seen the most of in the entire game. 
it seems like they really are using that as a staging base. Okay, here we go. We got a sub attack going on near San. For it says near San Fernando. It's really kind of out in the middle of the South China Sea. The AK Ayato Maru is attacked by the Skipjack. It launched two torpedoes to no effect. And we got another one off. All right, and we actually scored a hit here. The Sea Wolf SS Sea Wolf got into the AK. Hokumai Maru, one torpedo hit. It's on fire with heavy damage. Excellent. We may not see it go down because of fog of war, but you know, heavy fires or heavy damage and fires generally means it's going down. Oh no. A submarine attack near Iwo Jima. Uh, we did we hit the Mito Maru. Or Me Too Maru. Uh, shell hits 10, torpedo hits 1. Heavy damage on the Maru, but the Sculpin, our, tor our, our submarine, got hit three times. Uh, that's because we were attacking from the surface. I, I you know, I don't know sometimes. I, I get that we ha we're better on the offense when we surface, but I don't really, ca I can't imagine a submarine commander out there saying let's go to the surface boys i mean i would shoot the torpedoes and see what happens we've got a japanese sub right off of sydney here now the warego yeah the warego the pg is spotted it it's searching for it nothing came of it uh, so we do have submarine activity off of sydney now uh ss swordfish we're firing again at japanese shipping at an AK, uh, two two torpedoes, nothing happened. Uh, we had an okay. Now then, uh, wow, okay. So we had a Japanese task force made up of two light cruisers and two destroyers run into an Allied task force, one of ours. The uh, destroyer AVD, the Preston, shell hits four heavy fires. The AKL, now these are probably two-point ships. We were trying to get them back up into Cebu, I think. Uh, I can't remember. It may have been Ilio, it may have been Cebu. These are only two-point ships. We were trying to get more supply in there. Uh, meanwhile, we've now got two with heavy fires and one just immediately sunk on 11 shell hits, the Montanez. And so we've got a ship down, ship down. Uh, the DD Helm found a Japanese sub off of San Francisco. Uh, an, the I-26, we found it. Nothing happened, though. We didn't get any depth charges into it. Wow, a lot of, uh, lot of submarine activity overnight here. Okay, they're coming to bomb northern Borneo. Nope, this is into Singapore. My bad. Uh, they sent in five sallies. We got nothing up uh, for cap, but it looks like our flak went nuts. We damaged three sallies and destroyed one by flak. Oh, we did get... Well, that's weird. Now, it says allied aircraft, no flights. Then it says allied aircraft losses. Oh, these were still on the ground. Duh. Well, that's not good. You know I hate ground losses. Uh, Vildebeest, two damage. Vildebeest, one destroyed on the ground. Buffaloes, two were damaged, and one was destroyed on the ground. That's not good, but we, I mean, we don't fly at night, right? So the Japanese are taking a risk, and they did lose some planes taking that risk. Those could have been operational losses. We did take one down by flak, but not good. Uh, the Porpoise got a fire off at a cargo ship to no avail uh the sea lion man oh man our subs are really doing the work this time the sea lion got a two torpedoes into the nitty maru heavy fires heavy damage we may see that go down a dutch sub the k i shouldn't say the kx22 people on war in the east hate when i do that it's the ss 62 right uh no, L is 50. K is 100. The SS-112 has gotten two torpedo hits in on a Japanese cargo ship. It's on fire, heavy damage. Man, great, great sub turn for us. Those U.S. torpedoes are actually exploding, Stanley. Can you believe it? 
Ra, uh, Rabal. Rabal. Yeah, that's actually, I've heard that. Now that you say that, Rabal. God, I'm still working on, hold on, I'm going to go find your uh, previous comment, Blinking Duck. Ga Lip O Lee. Uh, I'm still working on that one. But you're right, I think it is Rabal. Um, okay, the Sea Dragon got off some torpedoes, nothing, nothing doing. Repairing ships, we're ending the pulse, and we move into the daytime on December 23rd. We had a great sub-turn there. Uh, in the air, I mean, if the Japanese are going to bomb us at night, there's not a whole lot we can do. We really cannot fly at night. So we're reacting to some Japanese subs in and around here, there, and everywhere, actually. Uh, we've got more of our troops unloading at Luganville, at Rangoon. Oh, good. We've got cloud cover over Rangoon. I love it. No bombing this time. No bombing Moresby and no bombing Rabal. Uh, thank you, Blinking Duck, by the way. I like to get as many right as I can. Rabal. That is correct. I know I've heard Rabal before. Uh, right, okay, so this is a Japanese sub, again, off Sydney. It's the same one. Our destroyer, the Voyager, has found it. Uh, we sighted it. I don't even think we got any depth charges in the water. We didn't. Oh, good. Now we're on this sub that's right up. Yeah, wrong. Okay, they're going to flip us over here by Moresby where there's a Japanese sub. Our AM Finch uh, was attacked, but no doing, nothing happened. The SS Snapper sub fired on the Inju Maru. We launched two torpedoes, nothing doing there. We're all, okay, another sub attack by this Japanese sub near Moresby. Uh, at the AM Lark, so we're, it's it's attacking minesweepers. We're fine with that. Okay, wow. Now, this is a little bit more of a problem. This is off Bundaberg, uh, right here at the very eastern, you know, as far east as you can get here in Australia, at least the way this map is oriented. Uh, the SSI-173 Japanese sub, it did get two torpedoes into the AK Californian uh, Hotel California. A uh, torpedo hits one on fire. Heavy damage. Not good. Did it go down yet? Nope. I don't see that it's gone down yet. We'll see if we can get it out of there. Yeah. Air operations. We've got a lot of bad weather, which I like. I mean, for us right now, bad weather is an advantage. <laughs> yeah, I, I know, Stanley. It really does. It really does uh, become a pronunciation class. Well, I you know, maybe I need to become more worldly. How about that? I'll be able to pronounce everything in Aruba perfectly next time. Uh, we're being followed. We're being snooped. We're being observed. All right, we're going to go through a lot of those. Uh, I'll look at them on the SIG intelligence report or the operations report. Okay, they're going to come in and bomb Rangoon anyway. Uh, they only sent like 21 bombers, and we got the Flying Tigers up, plus some Buffaloes, plus some Blenheims. We destroyed three of their bombers and damaged two others. They targeted our Corvette, the Genesta, and didn't hit it. So, okay. And now they're coming in again at Rangoon. Now, see, I know how to pronounce Rangoon because of Crab Rangoon, obviously. Uh, they got, let's see, they did send some zeros on escort this time. Only five of them, though. And we destroyed three bombers. They destroyed one of the Flying Tigers, one Blenheim, and one Buffalo. They did hit an AK that's in here, the Havildar. Uh, torpedo hits one on fire heavy damage. Okay, so they got a little bit of the better of that fight. A lot of sightings, a lot of sightings. 
we'll kind of fast forward through some of these sightings. We don't need to watch all that, do we? All right, so here's another bombing mission. This one at Changsha. Now, remember, we moved that one squadron of Flying Tigers down here uh, at Changsha. They're coming in with 31 zeros, 32 bombers. We got 12 scrambled in the air. Uh, nice. Okay, we didn't lose any. We shot down a zero. We shot down two Bettys. They did get in on the air base, though. And we got 33 runway hits. Eh, we may have to get them out of there. They're already deep into that runway now. Um, okay, afternoon air attack at Consen. Sure, okay. So they're just hitting that unit out of Consen. Big deal. Uh, Changsha, they're back. And we destroyed a Nell. They did not get uh, any of the Flying Tigers. And they didn't do any damage. So nicely done. That's why we put them there. Uh, now they're bombing in the Philippines at Bataan. 19 bombers. They took no losses. They also did not hit our ship with their bombing. So not much happening there. Um, this is a, the Chinese core at Wenchow, the 100th Chinese. They're just ground bombing it to disrupt it. Okay. I would much rather them do that than be bombing Rangoon or someplace like that. Now, I take that back for a unit like this. It's actually moving. Uh, 19 Sonias came in on that out here at the 63rd Chinese Corps, but they did no damage. They may have disrupted us, but that's okay. We're not about to fight. 15 Lilies in on Lu Chao. They did hit the runway. Again, we're not running anything out of Lu Chao, so whoop de doop -dee. Uh They hit Manila. And they hit the port there. Port hits two. Well, that's okay. We're not running anything out of Manila right now. Oh, this is going to be a heck of a battle. So they're coming in on Singapore. 15 Sallies, 32 Oscars. We got 36 Buffaloes in the air. And we damaged four Sallies and one Oscar was destroyed. Uh, we had one Buffalo destroyed, one damaged. They did hit the runway, though. So, you know. That's always a bad thing. We'll just skip through Wen Chao. They're going to bomb up in China and try to hit ground units. That's fine. Uh, Stanley, you can fast forward by just hitting the escape key. So if you hit escape, it will go through that stuff. Uh, six Sonyas in our Sonyas, I should say, in on the 63rd Chinese Corps for a bombing. Oh, here they come back to Rangoon now. All right, uh, we got 20 of the Flying Tigers up, it looks like. We got some Blenheims up, some Buffaloes up. They came in with five Escort aircraft on the Zeros. Uh, six Nels, 15 Oscars. We destroyed one, damaged one. We lost a Flying Tiger, destroyed, and a Blenheim. They tried to hit two cargo ships, the Nerpura and the Nirvana, and they failed. So, good result. Here comes bombing on Rabal, and at Rabal, 20 Japanese Bettys. Uh, they hit the ground unit there. We lost a gun. They're trying to soften that up for their landing because those coastal guns, you know, if we mo lost a coastal gun, that will lessen the damage that uh, we do to them when they land, of course. All right, so this that was transporting shoot troops and transporting supply. Now our troops are moving around in China, in India, up Australia, uh, through the U.S., and now we get into ground combat in China. Now this is important, right? Changsha is the most important location we have here. We're trying to hold this Japanese unit back and we actually outnumber them almost four to one. Uh, as you can see, we're even better for the combat value. So they had 21. Now, this is just a bombardment attack, so it's like artillery, right? They had 21 casualties. We had none. So that works. Now, question how, I guess we traded artillery fire. Okay. Anyway, uh, Chusen out here, they had 527 Japanese troops. We had 23 thousand Chinese troops and they still had a better adjusted assault value than us 
Think about that for a second. Uh, Japanese, 15 casualties reported. Again, that was a bombardment, so we didn't suffer any casualties from that. Um, Kusai, so up here out by Patau, we we're getting attacked, but we had a, a really nice combat value there of 130, and we drove them back. Uh, Hawaiian, this again is that Lusu War Area head command headquarters that I can't get out of there, but in some respects, does it matter? Not really. Maybe it matters to that commander, I guess. Uh, Eureka. Okay, now they're just expanding fortifications. That should be about it. All in all, we had a really successful turn from a submarine perspective. We did lose a couple of cargo ships, but those were out by the Philippines. And I don't think that we, you know, we didn't, re we wouldn't be sending them back into the Philippines if they were worth more than two or three points. So I think we're all right. And now we send her back on Hawaii. It is now December 23rd. If we go to our intelligence report and see what the game is telling us actually sunk, uh, we took out one of their cargo ships, which was a 10 point ship. Uh, excellent. Uh, we lost this AVD. So that was an aircraft tender destroyer that we're using for ASW for now. Five points. We lost it. Cargo, the California, the Hotel California. Uh, six points. We lost that near Bundaberg, which is a real problem. That's off the east coast of Australia. Uh, we lost a cargo ship in the Philippines. Yeah, this is what I was saying. We would not have sent those back into the Philippines if they, or I wouldn't have, if they were worth more than two or three points. And then the Havildar did go down. A British ship near Rangoon uh, got a torpedo in the side. Eight point ship. We lost that one. All right. When we come back tomorrow, what what should we focus on this week? I don't know. I'm gonna let you guys think about that. When I come back tomorrow. We will talk about, and that will be at 2 o'clock Pacific Coast time. I'm going to stream this game every day. We're going to try to get in two to three turns a week from now on. Um, when I come back tomorrow, though, we'll talk about what you want to focus on. We'll go look for the U.S. Grant Stanley. We'll find out where that transport ship is. Uh, but, yeah, I'm going to call this an episode. We're on to December 23rd, and off we go. Uh, thank you guys for all for stopping by. I'm going to take like a 10 minute break. Then I'm going to come back up with uh, the air war war in the East two. I will be back like 10 or 15 minutes. I'll be back up with that. And then immediately after that, we'll do our let's play of war in the East two. So as always, thank you guys so much. Uh, you're the reason the channel's a success. Uh, all the comments, uh, we're building a really good community. And I like that, uh, the back and forth and the questions. And it helps everybody learn, including me. So thank you all very much. Uh, this has been Strategy Gaming Dojo. I'll talk to you next time. Have a good one.